Hello everyone, welcome to basic electronics tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss about semiconductor materials. Particularly, I will be discussing on the three most commonly used semiconductor materials in the electronic field, which are germanium, silicon and gallium arsenide. In the field of electronics, the fabrication of every discrete solid state electronic device or an integrated circuit requires the use of a semiconductor material of the highest quality. Please note, the semiconductor must be of highest quality. Therefore, it is quintessential for any electronic student to know what are semiconductors. In the second point here, I have provided the definition for semiconductors. Let us now go through it. Semiconductors are a special class of elements that have conductivity between that of a good conductor and an insulator. Generally, semiconductor materials are divided into two classes. The first one is called the single crystal semiconductor and the second one is the compound semiconductor. Let us now very briefly look into what is a single crystal semiconductor and what is a compound semiconductor. Single crystal semiconductors have a repetitive crystal structure. If you look at the figure 1 here, which is the covalent bonding for silicon atom, you will note that the crystal structure is repeated. This kind of semiconductor is called as a single crystal semiconductor. Examples of single crystal semiconductor are germanium and silicon. We will discuss about this diagram in more detail in my next video when I discuss about covalent bonding. Let us now move on to compound semiconductors. Compound semiconductors are constructed of two or more semiconductor materials of different atomic structures. As the name itself is very clear, it is a compound of two or more semiconductors. An example covalent bonding diagram is shown in figure 2 here. If you look at this diagram very closely, you will note that we have gallium as well as arsenide. So, this is a compound of two semiconductors and hence the name compound semiconductors. Examples of compound semiconductors are gallium arsenide, cadmium sulfide, gallium nitride and gallium arsenide phosphide. Please note, among these compound semiconductors, gallium arsenide is one of the most widely used compound semiconductor. Let us now discuss a little bit more about these three semiconductors individually. I am going to start with germanium first. In the initial days of the electronic device construction, that is almost in 1930s and 1920s, germanium semiconductor was used almost extensively because in those days, germanium was quite easy to find and was available in quite large quantities. Germanium was also relatively easy to refine to obtain very high levels of purity. Please note, high levels of purity is one of the most important aspects in the fabrication process. However, there was an issue. It was found that diodes and transistors constructed using germanium as the base material suffered from low levels of reliability. This was found to be because of the sensitivity of the germanium to changes in the temperature. That is, the characteristics of the devices fabricated using germanium varied significantly with variation in the temperature. This is considered as a negative trait in the field of electronics. Therefore, scientists started to investigate for other semiconductor materials which produced stable characteristics under varying temperatures. It was at this time scientists found that silicon semiconductor had improved temperature sensitivities. But once again there was a challenge. It was the refining process for manufacturing silicon of very high levels of purity was not available in those days. That is, I am talking about 1945s and 1950s. However, as time progressed, 
the refining process was finally found and in 1954 the first silicon transistor was introduced. With that, silicon very quickly became the semiconductor material of choice. Another important aspect that led to silicon becoming semiconductor material of choice is that it is one of the most abundant materials on earth. Therefore, any availability related concerns were completely eliminated. With that sorted, silicon became default semiconductor in constructing electronic devices and the manufacturing and design technology improved steadily through the following years to the current high level of sophistication what we have today. As time moved on, the field of electronics became increasingly sensitive to issues of speed. During this time, computers were operated at very high speeds and communication systems were operating at higher levels of performance. Scientists soon found that silicon could not produce devices with such high performance and therefore a semiconductor material capable of meeting these new needs which is higher speeds and higher levels of performance had to be found. The result was the development of the first gallium arsenide transistor in the early 1970s. This new transistor made from gallium arsenide had speeds of operation up to five times that of the silicon. However, the problem that semiconductor industry faced that time was because of the years of intense design efforts and manufacturing improvements using silicon, silicon transistor networks for most applications were quite cheaper to manufacture and had advantages of highly efficient design strategies. On the other hand, gallium arsenide was more difficult to manufacture at high levels of purity, it was more expensive and had little design support in the early years of development. However, the demand for increased speed resulted in more funding for gallium arsenide research to the point that today it is often used as the base material for a new high speed very large scale integrated circuit designs. Right, that was about a very brief discussion on semiconductor materials. Let us now summarize our discussion. We just learned that gallium arsenide had speeds of operations five times that of silicon. Does it mean gallium arsenide has completely overtaken the electronics industry and replaced both silicon or germanium? Strangely, no. Germanium devices are being manufactured even today. However, they are only used in a limited range of applications. And be sure it will continue to be used in certain applications because of its availability and low manufacturing costs, which is what is the challenge with the gallium arsenide. In fact, the same can be said about silicon as well. Silicon, in fact, has the benefit of years of development and is the leading semiconductor material for electronic components as well as integrated circuits. If you search in the internet, you will find that silicon is still the fundamental building block for Intel's new line of processors, which are very widely used in the computers today. Well, that is about this discussion on semiconductor materials. In my next video, I'll discuss about the Bohr's model for silicon, germanium, as well as gallium arsenide. And I will also discuss the covalent bonding and the bonding structure for the same. So stay tuned. Well, if you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on basic electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.